So this week, in keeping with three-week tradition of doing episodes about costumes up until the week of Halloween, I'm going to give my two cents about superheroes with body armor versus superheroes with spandex in comic book movies. So, without further ado, this is Spandex or Body Armor, week three of Halloween episode spectacular. This week's topic is spandex versus body armor, the pros and cons of each. There are a multitude of different styles of costumes in comic book movies. Some are incredibly accurate, even down to the material being spandex or other lightweight, stretchy suits. Though some, although they are undeniably badass, are body armor and unlike the comics even when they could be both. Last week, I put every single X-Men costume on the bad list, due to them not being comic accurate and, you know, leather, which kind of looks stupid nowadays. They're leathery in the earlier movies, and body armory in the later ones, even to the point of not making sense. If Wolverine has a healing factor, why should he need body armor? I think that the spandex versus body armor debate comes down to one point. The idea that spandex cannot be cool, and that body armor is always cool. As previously said, the X-Men costumes are body armor. At the time they came out, this made sense. Superman 4 The Quest for Peace was criticized for relying too much on spandex with Christopher Reeve and Nuclear Man, but now colored costumes have been proven to work, even with the X-Men franchise. X-Men First Class actually had colored costumes, as well as other popular superhero movies. The Avengers, Captain America, Deadpool, all had colored costumes. So, I was surprised when in Days of Future Past, not one colored costume showed up. I understand that you want darker suits in the future, but the past? In the 70s? How does that work? The 70s would be perfect for colored costumes. However, if you do go all the way with colored costumes, it can get ridiculous. I mean, I can see why Nuclear Man was terrible. And Christopher Reeve only pulls off spandex because he's truly a nice guy with nothing to hide. So, you can't really win. If you go entirely one way, it sucks, but if you go entirely the other way, it doesn't work either. It's a no-win situation. You need a good combination. Way back in the 30s, when Action Comics number 1 was written, and Superman was on the cover lifting a car, he wore spandex. This was for a simple reason. When Jerry Sieg and Joe Schuster wrote it, they explicitly had circus strongmen of the 30s in mind. The strongmen wore spandex, suits, large belts, and occasionally capes. Superheroes following him also took to this. Batman wore spandex, and the Fantastic Four wore jumpsuits that kind of looked like spandex. In time, comic book costumes gradually evolved into a more body armory look for superheroes that we have today. The change started in 1989, with the release of Batman. Before that, all superheroes had worn spandex, but Michael Keaton didn't. He wore black, plasticky body armor capable of moving somehow, and it was bulletproof for some reason. After this, Blade came out, closely followed by X-Men, which both had body armor-ish costumes. Spandex does have its moments, though. It outlines the actor's physique. Both Christopher Reeve and Tobey Maguire had great costumes. In fact, in the right circumstances, spandex looked great. However, If you take spandex too far, you get weird costumes with shiny gold pieces like Nuclear Man's. Form-fitting spandex can be good, but only in small doses. When it was first shown as an alternative to spandex in Batman and Batman Returns, body armor looked great. Other characters later nailed the aesthetic as well, like Nick Cage as Big Daddy or Chris Evans as Captain America. Body armor isn't always comic accurate, but it usually looks cool when it's done right. Body armor can also make characters seem invincible. If a hero is wearing an impenetrable suit, how can a villain defeat them? Unless, of course, it sucks, like the Dark Knight trilogy, where the main character is stabbed and shot through the armor. Body armor can also be great, but you have to write villains well for it to work. I think the main question of spandex versus a body armor boils down to the accuracy over coolness debate. Spandex is comic accurate but not everything in the comics should be accurately represented on the big screen. Spandex works in the comics. It's form-fitting and conceals the identity of the wearer. It can show off an actor's impressive physique, like Ben Affleck in Batman v Superman, though the spandex in that was padded and attached to rubber for better definition of his physique. Spandex makes our heroes seem even more super. It looks amazing when Superman walks into a building full of armed goons and takes on a machine gun head-on. One of the coolest scenes in Superman Returns is this, where Superman is shot in the eye at point-blank range and doesn't even blink. Batman is another example of this. 
If a man can rush into a building or fight a small army of thugs while only wearing a layer of spandex, he should be a superhero. Hell, he probably deserves the 2016 Badass Award. Though spandex can make our heroes seem cooler, body armor does this better. It just makes our heroes more relatable and awesome. If they wear a bulletproof vest to protect themselves, it shows that they can be injured, and less the armor is useless, like, like Batman in The Dark Knight, or Wolverine in Days of Future Past, or whatever this is. If the armor does work, however, it brings up the question of where to stop. If heroes are able to wear it, why not wear it all the time? Why ever take it off? Why doesn't Batman just wear the Dark Knight armor all the time? Why doesn't Iron Man just keep the Hulkbuster suit on? You need to establish firm boundaries about the armor, and will it or won't it be able to work in certain situations. In answer to the original topic of this episode, both spandex and body armor are necessary. It depends on how you're telling the story. The Batman v Superman Dawn of Justice Batsuit is cool, and so is the Justice League Batsuit. They work in that universe because it's a comic booky universe. I believe that it is bulletproof and knifeproof and fireproof and still maneuverable. The Brandon Routh Superman suit also works. It's not exactly spandex, but it's a breathable, movable material. Both extremes can work. Spandex works in the Spider-Man movies, the Christopher Reeve Superman movies, and kick ass. But it does fail if it's overused. I love this deleted scene of Christopher Reeve and Spandex walking through machine guns and flamethrowers and frozen, just just clad in spandex. The fact that he's the power to walk through these things facing him with a suit that screams that he has nothing to hide is just awe-inspiring. Body armor works the same way. Big Daddy looks great, he's bulletproof, and he uses it to his advantage. The Dark Knight Rises bat suit in Batman v Superman looks great, and it's believable in a comic booky sort of way. However, it would seem a little out of place in a movie like Kick-Ass. A perfect mixture of body armor and spandex hasn't been reached yet. However, on several occasions, they have come very close to making a great suit. The bat suit from Justice League is comic accurate. It looks clothy, but it's also sort of armored. The Captain America is a prime example of this. His costume is clothy, but still sort of armored. It looks great. In all, I think that I personally like spandex a bit more because, you know, it shows off the actor's physique, it adds to their mystique, and makes them seem even cooler. Somehow. I honestly don't know. Maybe not spandex, but some other sort of material should be used, like that of Brandon Routh's Superman costume, or Batman v Superman Dawn of Justice's bat suit, because both those are very cool-looking costumes, and, and I believe that both of them can stop bullets and knives. In closing, I don't know. I don't think a perfect mixture of both has been reached yet, but with all the comic book movies coming out these days, soon enough, a perfect costume will come along. I hope you liked this video. If you did, like and subscribe down below. Leave a comment about whether you like spandex or body armor or something in between. And, I don't know. This is Freeze Gun Incorporated, signing off.